In this video, I'm gonna give you some ideas and strategies on how to meet your emergency needs for water. I'm gonna focus on ideas that don't get a lot of attention and hopefully you haven't thought of before. If you wanna skip the strategy and get right to my ideas, fast forward to the two minutes and 43 second mark. The strategy I use when attacking this challenge is to divide up water into three categories. First, you need clean drinking water that can be used immediately with no treatment or preparation at all. This could be commercially bottled water or drinking water that you store in approved containers. I would suggest that you store at least a week's worth of this first category of water. Now that's all pretty obvious, but second, you can store water that is clean but should be treated before use. This category would include the water in your water heater, water pipes, and outdoor tap water storage in approved containers. Even if the supply of water is cut off, you still have quite a few gallons of water in the plumbing in your house that you can use in an emergency. But because of possible contamination after an emergency event, and the fact that it's probably been sitting for a week or two at this point, you should probably boil this water before using it. And the third and last category of water storage is water that needs filtration and purification. This could be water from a rain barrel, your swimming pool, or from a creek running behind your house. This water would be your last resort after all the other water's gone and you have no other way of getting fresh water. To use this water, you would need a strong filtration system, such as a Berkey filter, and I would also boil this water before or after the filtration and store it in something like an igloo cooler. Another strategy to use for emergency water storage is to think of items that you're interested in for hobbies, landscaping, home improvement, decor, furniture, and gardening that serve a functional or entertainment purpose and can also be tapped for water in an emergency. I'll highlight this a little bit more in a minute, but some examples of this would be a garden fountain in your backyard, a waterbed for your teenager, or the aforementioned swimming pool. By shifting your thinking from how do I store all this water that I'll probably never need to more of how can I store water in something I already use every day or what fun things can I buy that I really enjoy that will kill two birds with one stone, you can easily tackle this challenging problem. In conclusion, changing your way of thinking and dividing water up into different categories can alleviate the need for storing months of bottled water and make investing in water storage a little more palatable if you get to enjoy it in the meantime. So now let's move into some ideas for the second and third category of water that maybe you haven't thought of before. Most of us have heard the advice to fill up a bathtub with water if a tornado or hurricane is coming and we have some advance notice to prepare. But bathtubs are disgusting and you would never want to drink out of one without filtering and purifying the water. Luckily, there are inexpensive products such as disposable bathtub liners or the water bob that you should consider for your next prep that will help with this. These products prevent the water from ever coming in contact with the bacteria that grows on the surface of your tub. Another suggestion for category number two is to get a short garden hose with a valve on it so you can access the water in your water heater tank. If you don't have this handy, you'll most likely have a hard time getting the water out of the drain valve on the bottom of the tank without spilling most of it or damaging the drain valve by opening it and closing it over and over again. And finally, this might be obvious, but if you use a CPAP at night or run a humidifier in a dry environment or you still iron your shirts for work, stockpile a bunch of distilled water. We normally avoid distilled water for use as drinking water because it doesn't have any minerals in it, but you already know you're going to use it eventually anyway, and it could also be used in a pinch to supplement your emergency water supply. And for category three, all sources of water are fair game. Yes, even your toilet. If your choice is to die of dehydration or drink the water from your toilet bowl, you're gonna get past your disgust pretty quickly. So this is the category of water that you can really get creative with and where I have the most ideas for you. Again, the key for this type of water is to have a very good filter and a process for boiling and storing the water. I highly recommend a filter like a Berkey filter or Life Straw that's designed for an emergency and also a clean storage tank for water after it's boiled, such as an igloo cooler. Now we've all heard that the holy grail for emergency water is a rain catchment system, such as rain barrels or water cisterns, but that may not be affordable, practical, or even legal for some people. So some other ideas for dirty water storage that you might not have thought of are aquariums for pet fish, bird baths, koi ponds, hydroponic or aquaponic garden systems, and plastic kiddie pools. 
These are all items that can serve two purposes in our lives, and all of them require no thought to be an emergency prep except the kiddie pool. That one would require a little advance notice of an impending disaster so you could get out the garden hose and fill it up. Again, make sure you have a means of filtering and purifying the water from these types of sources, or they could do more damage than good. Hopefully this video has given you some ideas to help you be prepared with water storage. Thanks for watching and please hit the thumbs up button and leave a comment below.